Here are the top 10 most useful workshop blueprint items for Planet Zoo. I will give credit to every creator of every blueprint in this video. All the links to every blueprint will be in the description down below. At number 10, we have got fonts and the top of the fonts on the workshop page. To me anyway, and to the general public, seems to be Reese's fonts. They have an amazing collection of different style fonts for Planet Zoo to put in your zoos. This one, what you're looking at here, is personally one of my favourites. Different fonts around your zoo really can enhance how your zoo looks and how functional and realistic it seems. It gives you the opportunity to style your zoo to your taste in a little bit more. You can get rid of the in-game fonts and have custom fonts like this around your zoo. At number nine, we've got the disability sign created by Paul. I think all zoos should include accessibility routes and ramps and signs like this. And this pairs nicely with number eight slot, which is park accessories. You can make an accessibility entrance and exit and include the sign. We've got a bus stop, an accessibility entrance, an entrance gate, turnstile, and an information board. And it's all created by me, Adam Up. I especially like this modern information board. At number seven, we've got backstage area props. We got a lot of props included in the conservation pack, including like spades and buckets and stuff like that. But there is stuff on the workshop like you're looking at here, like barrels, bins and electrical unit points, which go very well when creating backstage areas. At number six, we're looking at larger stuff now, and these are custom made walls and these are by me again. You might come across that I'm being a bit biased here, but you will see quite a few items off the Steam Workshop page, which I have created myself. But I do actively still use these items with everything I build, and they are popular on the Steam Workshop page. These custom walls make it so much easier to create any building you wish. We've got two tile and two wooden and tile. And all you have to do is click on one wall and go into that group by double clicking, hold control over it to select everything, and then just duplicate that over and you can start building your custom walled building. Next up, we've got habitat items, including giant climbing frames like you can see here. Anything that's gonna make your life a little bit easier when placing stuff in a habitat and save you a little bit of time is gonna help. And that goes with groups of foliage like this, this arching kind of like archway foliage and trees. And one of my favorite ones is this very adorable custom made sleeping log from ZSH Plays. And next up is something else what can go in habitats. These four by four backdrop walls really work well at the back of habitats and walkthrough exhibits. You can just pick these up or duplicate them and place them at the back of habitats to give it a more natural look for your guests and for your animals. These can be used in backdrops of habitats like this large cat enclosure, or they can be used for inside of walkthrough exhibits and indoor areas of habitats to give it a more natural look. And again, these are created by me and are on my Steam Workshop page. We're going into the top three now, and at number three is souvenir shop items. If you want to create an actual store within your zoo or a large shop, you will need custom made souvenir items because we simply don't have them in the game. Now there's so many different ones on the workshop, just type in shop. I'll leave a couple of links down in the description down below of, of ones I use. This one you're seeing now is from Reese, but there is so many. Look at these souvenir shops and they're all brilliant. You've got some larger objects here as well. And just a special mention to this one, this one is absolutely brilliant. It's actually by another content creator called Shipsy. And I mean, honestly, there's so many on the Steam Workshop. Just type in shop, like I've just said, and just have a gander and see what fits the aesthetics of the shop you're trying to create. But having these decorative items, because obviously they're not functional, it just looks so much better next to, in front of, or included in any shop. Okay, at number two, we've got something what you might not think is useful. And to be honest, it's not. But the reason I wanted to include this into this video is because I've been using them a lot quite recently. I've started building a whole zoo called New Tropic Zoo, which is a modern zoo based in the grasslands of Africa. And I wanted to add some elements of stuff you would actually find in a zoo. So kind of like thinking outside the box. And I came to the conclusion of children's playground stuff, including like slides and swings like you can see here. 
I've got a child, I've got a young boy, he's seven years old, and I can't imagine going to a zoo without having some kind of play area for kids. You see it all the time. So get with the realistic aspects of creating zoos and include these in your own zoos. Yet again, there are so many on this team workshop page. Just type in playground and you'll find a lot. But personally, I like this recent one created by Bacon Play. I really do like how realistic it looks. So I'll leave a link to Bacon Play's playground in the description down below. He's also a content creator on YouTube. So go and check him out if you want to watch some more videos of Planet Zoo stuff. And finally, at number one, the item off the Steam Workshop, what I have used the most and currently still do use in everything I create. And it's this little guy, it's the Archer. Let me know in the comment section right now, do you use this? Because if you don't, I'm about to change your life. If you don't know what it is, you might be looking at it and thinking, oh, that's a nice little decorative item. But Adam, why is it the most used item in your Workshop Blueprints? And that's because this little fella is the exact same height of a guest. This is not an ornament, ladies and gentlemen. This is a measuring tape. So this is an adult size guest. The exact same size. So this can be used for measuring anything. And I mean anything. All you have to do is put it up to any object, like a doorway like this, to see if the doorway is too large or too elevated. But my favourite thing to use it for is your barriers to your habitats and around your zoo. So this, like I just said, is the exact same height of an adult guest which will be in your zoo. So you can use this to measure where your barrier will come up to. Say we want a barrier just there, just over shoulder length of a guest, we can do. If it's too small or too large, we can lower it or increase the height. Using something that helps you measure like this really gets the details, the fine details and the realism down in your habitat creations and in your zoos. Everything will be in proportion and to size. What you don't want to do is create a nice looking barrier like this and then realise it's too big, your guests can't see through it and it looks stupid when your guests walk up to your habitat. Obviously all the items included in this video are my personal opinion on what I prefer to be the most useful off the Steam Workshop page. Your opinion might differ, that's okay. But hopefully I have introduced you into one or two different workshop items what you can now download and use for yourself which will help you be a better creator in Planet Zoo. And with that being said, that concludes this video of Planet Zoo. So it's goodbye from Mr Archman and it's goodbye from me. And I hope to catch you in the next Planet Zoo video. And what's that Mr Archman? They should like the video and subscribe if they're new around here. Alright, I'll let them know.